do want to let Twitter. you all know uh, that we're recording this. And if you don't, if you have concerns uh, about that and still want to participate, then there are a stack of index cards here. And if you want to uh, talk and not be recorded, come up, write something down, and you know someone else will 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 will, will, will do it that way, so that you don't have to speak and be and be recorded. Um, there are a very few number of things I want to talk about first, and then and then we can start. Uh, brainstorming or talking more about this or hearing concerns and so on. And the internet might have especially concerns, so if, if you're watching that, please let me know when that comes up. Um, uh, very briefly, most of you, how many of you use FetLife? Know of FetLife? Know other folks who use FetLife frequently? Hear about it often in your conversation? So basically everybody uh, who's here. Um, internet probably as well. FetLife uh, is an example of a website that currently has about 1.6 million user accounts on it uh, of supposedly you know, kinky people all over the world. They have a, an ongoing uh, war on right now, although it's invisible to the mainstream, about whether or not to face up to abuse from within their own community. Uh, there, are over, there are many situations in which uh, people have tried to name uh, abusers that they, they name alleged abusers from uh, their personal uh, interactions and have found that their posts are either edited or taken down from FetLife.com uh, by the FetLife <coughs> Care Bears. Uh, Kitty Stryker, who's been doing a lot of work on this off the ConsentCulture.com project, along with Maggie Mayhem, have uh, collected something like 300 stories. Um, and it wasn't even that difficult, which is frightening in and of itself. Um, I just asked, you know, I don't have never had a relationship with a partner. Uh, where that partner was not uh, uh, abused in, in some capacity. This is a pervasive issue in the world. If I have to convince any of you that rape culture exists, we have a very different conversation, and I'm not interested in having that one right now. <laughs> so that, 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 that happens. I'm Maymay. You all know me. If you don't know me, go to maybemaimed.com. I've been in the BDSM scene you know, for about 10 years, and I really hate it. Um, next, why is this an issue? Rape culture sucks and needs to change. We need to change the paradigm about how we talk about these abuses. Currently, there are, uh, like I mentioned, an enormous amount of silencing tactics and victim blaming uh, responses that come out of uh, the woodwork whenever someone mentions a rape or assault. I don't like that. I want it to change. One very, very eloquent blogger about this is Thomas Millar over at Yes Means Yes. He writes about what's called the social license to operate, or the SLOP. And what that means is essentially that there's a social uh, culture that enables these kinds of abuses not just to happen, but then to go unsupported when they do happen. He has this very, very awesome diagram called the cycles of silencing and transparency. And it starts up up here. Uh, each one of these columns is a violation, or a consent violation, or a rape, or an abuse. And he started out, uh, started out like this. Using predator theory, which is a term you can Google if you don't already know much about it, um, for uh, that, that have academic uh, studies showing that the majority of rapes and consent violations are perpetrated by uh, serial abusers and a small number of them. We can call these people predators. Predators uh, have an interaction with a survivor. We hope that they will be a survivor. Uh, when that abusive or coercive scenario plays out, the survivor has a choice to make, which is essentially to either speak out um, and talk about that issue, or to remain silent and sort of deal with it. See also, don't get raped. Um, the main decision point about whether or not to speak out comes from whether or not the community is able to support the survivor in actually discussing the issue and offering <coughs> personal support, material support, emotional support, um, and uh, actually uh, provide a sense of safety for that person. Um, when that happens, what we see is a situation in which the predator is held accountable for their actions and is far, far less likely to be able to uh, abuse someone in that same sphere again. If we don't get community support around these issues, what happens is that the victim blaming and uh, uh, victim blaming and silencing tactics start to come out. I'm assuming that you're all very familiar with this. Again, consentculture.com has a ton more information about this. Uh, that results in silence, which leads to absolutely nothing good happening. When this happens in case A, uh, in either case, uh, 
uh, whether or not there's support or silencing. What happens is that the predator is still free to do the same thing over again to the next uh, person that they target. And this cycle repeats again and again and again. And that is how we have predator theory uh, work. That's how predator theory works. That's how it supports these serial abuses. Why in either case, when we have both support and or silencing, do we have the situation repeating over and over and over and over again? The answer is because information from this encounter does not reach the next one. So you have one situation where this, where this experience has happened, but that does not, but that, that knowledge about that experience, that knowledge, the knowledge about uh, what transpired is not shared. There's a big hush-hush culture around these things. You know, don't talk about the rape that you experienced. Don't talk about the uh, 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 harassment or stalking that you uh, feel subjected to because all sorts of things that will empower the that will empower the abuser. You know, we don't want to hear it. It's you know, are you sure it was real? All that sort of stuff. So it doesn't make it out to the next, the next, the next, uh, the next column. Thomas Millar is probably more succinct about this than I could ever be, so I'm just going to quote, see how each incident exists in a vertical column, what's sometimes called the silo. Siloed information uh, keeps us from making informed choices about whether someone just made a mistake or is a bad actor. The thing that is necessary to have all the information on the table is to de-silo the information, to tear down those walls, and allow the information to flow freely. What does that, what that, what does that is support? If survivors get a supportive reception, they'll say what happened. Two point. If they don't, they won't, and that allows predators to hide their history. In the best case, the absolute best case, what you have is a situation where you have support, and the next survivor knows about that support. This green line here. This is the best possible case. Supportive community response, next situation, same community also uh, uh, in, that, in that social sphere, next survivors who knows about this makes a choice to, to speak out of that. This is limited to people who know each other or know how to get information from each other. And so it's an extremely socially constrained good, good outcome. So we're looking at a very, very bad situation overall. Does this make sense so far? Are there any questions from the audience in the chat room? No? Cool. How do you desilo this information and break down those walls? Uh, I will propose right now that we talk about something that I'm calling the FetLife Alleged Abusers Database Engine. It is a uh, client-side browser installable tool that allows you to easily report consent violations perpetrated by uh, people with FetLife accounts and then have those uh, reports displayed on that person's FetLife profile in a way that is difficult for FetLife to censor or to take down or to edit. Um, let me show you what that looks like in real time. Here is a account that someone made pretending to be me. Um, there are a lot of these, actually. Uh, it's kind of fun to skew around that life and take a look at them. Here's one, here's one report that pretends to be me. Um, once you install the tool, I'm just going to turn it on. I'm just going to turn it on here. What does it work in? It works in Firefox under um, Grease Monkey. As this is, that's the prototype um, environment, but we can talk about how to make that more accessible later. So this is what FetLife looks like. You're all very familiar with FetLife. If you have the tool installed and you're looking at a person's profile that has a reported consent violation reported against them, that consent violation will appear on their profile. They'll say right up at the top here, there are reports. This user has violated others' consent in these ways, and there's a list of <coughs> reports that are there. In addition, the FetLife alleged abusers database engine will, or FAVE, will add, um, let's go to the group, will add links to any uh, user on FetLife that, has, that says report a consent violation by username. Every single avatar picture on FetLife when this tool runs has a report a consent violation by username link right next to them. When you click on that link, you're given a form that looks like this, 
report alleged uh, report abusive behavior by fentanyl user, and you're asked to fill out some very basic information. If you use the tool and you click on one of those links, some of that information is already pre-filled, such as user ID and username, and all you need to do is fill out um, an abuse report and set up the pre-fields. What happened? Where did the abuse happen? When did it happen? So you fill this out, you hit submit. Um, I am going to use dev data to show you what this looks like because I don't actually want to file an abuse report. Um, so I'm going to switch over to my development versions where I have some data to just play with. And when you go to a group like this and you're browsing around FetLife, what you'll see is that if you file a, a report against a particular user, as you're browsing FetLife with no additional action on your part, you'll see that their avatar picture and their um, username, anywhere it exists on the site, will be highlighted in a very blocky, ugly, totally impossible to ignore yellow. When you click on that, again, you'll be taken to a profile page, and the profile page will have a consent violation report, or not many of them. And what this does is it breaks down uh, these, these lines. It is no longer necessary for person A in column A to know about person B. Now, regardless of whether or not there's any personal connection or kind of, you know, uh, uh, friendship or even like local community knowledge between these two people, like first column A could now be someone in New York and column B could now be someone in Australia. And they'll know about it because everyone's using FetLife more or less, or at least that's what they like to talk about. And if that's the case, then great. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Any questions from the audience or the internet about this? It sounds like right now it's in kind of a developer state. How hard is it, let's say I download Firefox on a fresh computer, how hard is it to get it run? You got three clicks to do. You have, if you have Firefox, you go to your tools extensions, you install GreaseMonkey. I can show you how to do that. Um, there's also instructions on the tiny.cc slash F-A-A-D-E page. Um, and then you go back to the page, <laughs> tiny.cc slash fade, and click on download and install. That's it. That's it. Um, but, but yeah, I would love to see something like this be port ported to Google Chrome, to you know Android browsers, just to get it everywhere sort of thing. Um, is it right now only to Yeah, right now it's only. I, so I did this in six hours. And here's the thing, right? Oh, I did wow. this in six hours. But I had an idea, and this was probably a good idea. So I thought. So, so, I, so, I, so I built it. It's a prototype. It's not exactly the most optimized solution. It doesn't do, you know, it has a couple of design features that we can talk about. But what I wanted to do was come to this conference, because I know that people came a very long distance in some cases, you know, have been planning about being, planning to be here for months and uh, a lot, put a lot of effort into being here because this is a place where some of the most uh, innovative and passionate people around this topic, I think, exist. So I want your help. I want to work with you to showcase two things. Number one, hey, we can do stuff. And number two, fuck asking permission. Fuck asking for... Uh, for a cooperation from the powers that be that have shown us that they're not interested in doing anything other than continuing to silence and abuse their own institutional positions and powers to maintain a status quo that is actively dangerous, actively abusive, and only serves themselves. I'm over it. It's done, and it needs to go away. And it can if we all cooperate on building tools like this and promoting these tools to others, uh, because I'm already I'm already seeing, you know. In fact, I was posting I posted this on Reddit uh, just just this morning, and it's already been taken down. Yeah. From Reddit. Uh, the BDSM community in Reddit. Like there is, I am really sick and tired of the way that the BDSM community uh, at large and the people that the powers that be in that community are uh, are behaving to cover their own filthy asses, basically. Um, 
it's, uh, it's, it's disgusting. I think this is the case here. Da -da -da. Is that it? Yeah, there you go. There you go. I posted this. Front Life alleged abusive database engine empowers internet users to alert others of reported consent violations perpetrated by Front Life users. Content removed. Less than a day. <coughs> I'm not going to be able to rely on anything other than people to spread this. So I need a lot of help. I would love coding help if you have uh, knowledge of that. I'd love documentation help if you use it. I'd love beta testing help if you're interested in trying out new things. Thank you. And more than anything else, I'd love uh, promotion help. I need help putting this in places where I can't already reach. And I need help from other people who, are, who believe this is important, who are not me, because many people don't want to listen to me already. And that's fine. Uh, they won't listen regardless of whether the idea is good or not. They won't listen regardless of uh, whether they support personally the project or not because it came from me. That shows you two things. Number one, where their real interests lie. And number two, how big uh, of this, an issue this really is for them. So I need other voices. And that's where you come in if you're willing. Um, we have an ability to power, empower individual people as opposed to any social group or structure. This is a tool for people rather than organizations, institutions, systems, cliques, etc. Um, I know that there are probably a lot of concerns around this. Um, and that's what I wanted to open up the floor for here. You particularly may have slightly less concerns, but I'm sure you can probably come up with some concerns that other people may have, or you can anticipate some responses that other people will throw at you. I've got a couple in store. Lots of great good. So let's talk about those uh, first. And then, if we still have time and if we're still willing, let's talk about improvements. Let's talk about where we can take this and what we can do with this and how this can be better or more compassionate or more useful or more specifically relevant to the case of the BDSM community at large, uh, rape survivors, survivors of other assaults or har harassment, and how we can make their experience either both using the tool and talking to others about it as easy as possible. Sound good? OK. So I saw a couple of hands go up when I was talking about concerns, and I saw a couple of people writing things down for, for that. So let's start with those. Um, I want to start with the hands that I saw go up, though. Go ahead. Oh, um, so November 2nd through 4th, I'm going to the Geeky Kink event in New York City, or in um, Wherever it is. Somewhere. Sure. Uh, which I expect I might need a lot more pieces of paper, like the ones that you gave me, that have information about yeah. this tool. Uh, as you know, I'm very interested in how to explain things to <clears throat> lay people, how to like genuinely empathize with their concerns, with their fears. I know, I expect that if I talk about this tool, the first thing somebody's going to say is, oh no, what about my privacy? Yeah. I want to keep hiding. How do I do that? Yeah. And the second thing they're going to say is, but doesn't this open the floor for people to make false accusations? Cool. How would you respond to these? <coughs> or how would anybody? Let's get these all listed out. And then let's go, let's go, let's go through some of them. You had something to say too. Uh, mine was also false accusations, but the example used, uh, though I don't think that this is necessarily going to be that relevant, someone clicks abuse violation because they're angry about a messy breakup and they post something to the effect of bitch be crazy. Yes. Uh, so I guess mine's not exactly false accusations, it's more like uh, data quality. Yeah, data, 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 uh, data integrity. Okay. Um, the one thing that was written down is what about false reports filed on a malicious intent? So we now have three of those. 
Absolutely. And, and I mean, and also just sort of intentional labels. Right, they intentional. And, what if people will say on topic, like this is, you're calling it the alleged abuse, uh, abusers database engine, but people can use it like to report anything. Yes, true. So is that, so can you help? Uh, it's sort of like data integrity, but also like, how would you respond if people took this tool and there were almost, like, there were very few allegations of abuse, but people started using it to say like, I got an STD from this person or something. That's abuse. What? Well, uh, well uninformed. I mean, well, if that person isn't uninformed, it's not really use. It's just. So I'm going to put that as misuse. Right. So like use of use of the tool that's not Manage. disintention. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. I mean, this is like. Not hold on a sec. Can we move to? Yeah. Uh, I have person? three very specific questions about topics that have already been raised. Um, Go ahead. For my own privacy, um, I'd like to know whether or not your database gathers, harvests any information about me when I make a report. Um, for false accusations, I'd like to know what the legal context is mm -hmm. for um, people who uh, feel that there has been an instance of uh, libel. Yep. And for data integrity, I'd like to know if there's a way for us to sort or organize the reported data in any way in the future. Great. Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah. Still concerns? Uh, concerns from the user side, not from the being reported side. Go ahead. Um, <coughs> what, um, how is it shaped in a way to minimize re trauma for abuse survivors? Yes. And also, um, abuse violations in general, or, or consent violations in general, can be murky. That's why we have terms like date rape instead of just a lot of saying rape. Right? Yeah. Um, what it gets even murkier in PDSM. Is there any prompting or any sort of um, clarification or clarity that can be integrated? Great, good, really good. I think the first thing that came up for me when I looked at it, similar to Elisa's first point, which is that there's a section where it says, um, you know, report your abuse and please get as much data as possible, time, to date, et cetera, et cetera. Something about the way that is, that's worded triggered in me this feeling of like, um, I'm not doing what needs to be done here if I don't give all of the information I have. And that might be really problematic for me as a survivor because yes. I don't want to out myself. Awesome. If I'm like, if this party this time, this then like, Right. So how do we balance the, 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 the need to collect data with the, with the, with the, uh, with not only the need for privacy, Never but also, energy. but also the the empathetic experience of what we're asking people to do, is write about a really traumatic experience that they've had, and how do we make that experience as least painful and most supported as possible, while still getting data we need to make it better informed choices for in the in the future. Does Rebecca, that does that make sense? Rebecca did make a really good point about privacy. Like I've had it happen that I agreed to interview about uh, anonymously about a private topic and then yeah. they're like this is what this anonymous person looks like this is the size of the backpack she carries yeah um, I, I can't remember but on the formula where do you provide resources for survivors or sort of like once you've done this you can go through everything that comes to I am going to you start steps another thing because these are all really really good ideas that I want to capture um, or actually hey can we borrow some sticky notes uh, they're not here. Oh, okay. Um, <coughs> in that case, let's just use the index cards. Can you, as you have ideas like that, can I ask you to write those down so that I can start to collect them and also include those? Um, there you go. Thank you. Good. So that goes into that's under the US one. Great. Are there any more concerns like this that? we can come up with now, or it's not, that's OK. How about from the net? Dear internet, any concerns or ideas? OK, how about Ustream? Cool. Um, Ah, uh, 
that's what I want to do. Let me show you. Do, do, do. Um, <clears throat> okay. I want to open something up here, and then we can start addressing these. Because you're right. I think so. Okay, we had like three on my own privacy, my own anonymity. Where's my getting collected? At least four on what about false accusations and some concerns about like this will be misused, this will be vandalized. Uh, how how to how to how to filter for that or, or deal with the fact that that's likely to happen. Um, Um, <clears throat> okay. Okay. Let's take it from the top. My own privacy. There are a couple things uh, around the design of the tool itself, like the design thinking of the tool that takes into <coughs> account this concern. Number one is, uh, as mentioned a little bit earlier, there's not information ever being asked about who you are. This will never collect information about you or ask you to provide information that is specific, like you know, show me, like what's your, what's your user ID? What's your username? There's also a very open ended sort of way that these questions are being asked, although I would like to hear improvements about, about these, such as enter a geographic location. Please be as specific as you can, but as vague as you are comfortable. For example, New York, New York City, or Paddles 250 West 26th Street, New York, New York 10011, United States, are all acceptable entries. The point here is to provide a way and an interface to make it as easy as possible to use, but vague enough so that you still have the opportunity to complete a report with as little or as much information about the thing that you want to report as you feel comfortable doing. All of this information is uh, granular to the degree you feel comfortable providing. Now, the more information you provide, the more likely an inference is going to be able to be made about who you are, where you were, what you're doing, who you were with, etc. I don't have a good way to deal with that because the one is intrinsically tied to the other. And that is a really good question that I'd like some feedback on. But I want to do that during like a feedbacky part of this. First, I want to show you what I've, how I've like looked at these issues first. Does that make sense? Is that okay? okay. Um, Secondly, this is an 100% client-side tool that does not communicate with FetLife in any way. There is never a request sent to FetLife or a uh, ping that is from this tool to FetLife that lets them know that you, when you're browsing, are using this tool. So that FetLife cannot know by looking at their own logs or their own, their own hits Who's using this tool and who is not? This has to be completely and 100% independent of anything FetLife will do for two reasons. Number one is because we know they censor these. We know they censor this. There's no, you cannot trust, we cannot trust that FetLife will in any way support, cooperate, respect this information. And secondly, because they have shown themselves to, when, it, as of, uh, as, as in compliance with Proposition 429, they state that they will warn and then ban users who violate the terms of use and one of the violations of the terms of use is apparently to uh, name your alleged user. And so uh, one of the concerns that I heard that wasn't raised here specifically, but that I heard out there at, at the conference was, well, if I use this tool, like I'm afraid FetLife will ban me. 
Number one, well, shit, isn't that kind of part of the problem? And number two, yes, that's why we can't trust fat life and we can't communicate with them at all. Does that make sense? Okay, I see none. Any questions about those two pieces? Those two pieces? Okay. False accusations. <clears throat> Bring it the fuck on. And here's why. In both situations where the accusation is objectively true, whatever the fuck that means, and also in situations where it is not true, this tool will, and the use of this tool on the reporting of these allegations and the sharing of these allegations, forces a consent conversation to the surface and empowers people to actually deal with the issues rather than continue to sweep them under the rug in several different ways. If you have a, a accusation levied against you and you feel it's inappropriate or unfair, what can you do? You can ignore it, such as we've been doing already. Or you can, when, when you see that you have a... Uh, you have a report such as this one showing up on your profile, above orientation, active, is looking for, etc. You have that at the very top of your profile, and you also have this very lovely, provided by FetLife, thank you FetLife, editable box right here called About Me. I propose that you respond to the allegation in the About Me section. And what that does is several things. Number one, gets information about consent violations and alleged uh, assaults out of this tool and onto FetLife. Wonderful. Number two, it will offer us the ability to see how people actually respond to these allegations. Now, currently, the state of affairs is that if you do not have an alleged accusation against you, you are perceived more or less to be safe. That's a safe player. Don't worry, this person's fine. The problem with this is, number one, you very well may have an accusation against this. There may, there may well be an accusation against this person that you don't know about because this information is siloed. And that, have, that is what the whole consent culture project, that's what people have been reporting, that's what people have been saying. In fact, in the actual live, uh, da, 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 in the, in the, where is it? Oh, here it is. In the, um, in the, in the data here, people are already saying here, um, This person had a reputation for non-BDSM related consent violations, etc. It would have been great to know that. But this person probably didn't have any information about this. So this will surface that. Thirdly, it offers a feedback mechanism. Now this is how the internet works. If you go on eBay, if you go on Yelp, if you go on Foursquare, if you go to a restaurant, if you ask for it to see a movie, if you do anything in your life on the internet, you are looking at feedback mechanisms built into the process under which you are making informed choices about what you want to do with your day. Now, this is not necessarily as important as, uh, you know, should I sleep with this person? But let's look at the paradigm here. You buy a book on eBay from a seller that has a high that has, you buy a book on eBay and you look before you purchase that book or whatever it is you're buying, you look at their stars, you look at their reputation, you look at other users' feedback about this person. If that feedback is bad, consistently, and over time, you probably don't want to buy that book. You may not trust that person to take your money and provide you with uh, an exchange. If the, the same, on, on the other hand, on, on FetLife, we're talking about a situation where people are actually hooking up with folks. And I know FetLife likes to talk about itself as it's not a dating, dating site, but let's actually see are those, are those meta tags still there, actually? Are they there? How does FetLife, how does FetLife talk about itself? Uh, <coughs> yep, here you go. FetLife likes to make a big fucking deal about how they are not a dating site. And yet right there in their own meta tags on their page, they advertise to, thank you, by the way, for that little tip. FetLife advertises to search engines what they say they do not do to their users. Dating site. This is a site for people to hook up to me to fuck. 
Now, when you have a website designed for people to hook up and to meet and to fuck, and you provide not only no feedback mechanisms for other folks, or, but actively silence your own community from talking about that with one another, what you have is a corrupt organization. It's as simple as that. And so these, these, these the alleged uh, false accusations that people are so worried about will be able, when, when those are, like when, when one person has, like basically what I'm saying is, yes, let's have false accusations. If you're really that concerned about it, I think that it's going to be a wonderful and if possibly uncomfortable experience for you to find out that almost everybody has an accusation against them. Why is that comforting? It's comforting because you get to now be, A, in control of how you respond to those allegations, which changes the paradigm from the survivor is the one who needs to either prove things or make a good case to the alleged abusers are the ones who need to respond in a constructive way to these things. And secondly, it provides a way for people to look for patterns in their own communities and their own uh, decision-making process. If I have, say, three reports of accusations, you know, of consent violations against me, and they kind of look like, I don't know, maybe the ones that I do have against me, uh, like, like this. About me, he has repeatedly gone out of his way to make a social environment hostile to me see, and mine by taking things that are or should be private and dragging them non-consensually into the greater public eye. He violates my consent on a global basis like the register, I'm speaking literally, R-A-P-I-S-R, the equivalent of a mass murderer. Where does this happen? On FetLife. How often does it happen? Repeatedly, comma, daily. All right, fine. Next one, bullied his way into joining, this is not about me, this is about somebody else, bullied his way into joining the BDSM student group at his university, causing many female and fab members to drop out from discomfort, had a reputation for non-BDSM related consent violations and for being a sexual predator on campus, including grouping, groping female students while they were intoxicated or unconscious and giving underage prospective students alcohol to get them drunk and then propositioning them for sex. Now. Regardless of the defense of either of these, if you see three reports like the first one on one profile and 20 reports like the second one on a second profile, what are you going to think? You now have information to make a an informed choice about what this looks like to you, what your risk assessment could be for this person. And we are beginning to see patterns emerge about individual people's behavior and about, hopefully, group behavior from the BDS scene, scene as a whole. In both cases, false allegations and... Uh, objectively real allegations. Putting this conversation up in front in the center of the uh, FetLife world and the BDSM world at large completely changes the paradigm and puts always individual users in control of how they uh, assess their risks and talk to others about it. Does that make sense? Okay, I see a couple of hands when I'm throwing that. Go ahead. Um, Is this about this? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I went to this workshop earlier in which uh, a couple who had been doing BDSM for a while were talking about like uh, how people say, "Aren't you afraid? Aren't you? Aren't you afraid if you if you do total power exchange, if you give up all your power to your partner, that he's going to like cut your arms and legs off?" And they're saying nobody asks if you're when you have a baby. Nobody says like, "Aren't you afraid you're going to cut their arms and legs off?" This seems analogous. Like there are stories for yes. Uh, certain things there aren't stories for glo uh, like publicly making rape accusations so if if this happens people's immediate response will be aren't you going to cut their arms and legs off yep. like isn't aren't all of the reports going to be false isn't it going to be totally useless mm -hmm. anarchy will break out <laughs> there's a couple things i want to just bring up here and i i think that these are things that it's valuable to be aware of they don't have like a huge influence on um on how we're going to put this together but um, a yeah, I mean the false accusations is just like in a feminist law, right? Like yeah. anytime rape comes up, that's just or you can't talk about rape because false accusations. And the worst thing in the world would be to be falsely accused of rape. Like that's worse than actually getting raped. Um, <laughs> but the other thing is, and specifically because of this abuse, an abuse-oriented um, reporting on the site, is that um, abuse is very and it evolves very quickly to, like, the thing about abuse is whatever you put in place to try to prevent it, abusers will then use yes. to the abusers. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the classic ways that abusers um, control their victims is by 
threatening to accuse their victims of being abusive. Yes. Um, so the only kind of false accusation that comes up for me is this sort of like, that they feel is a legitimate concern is this, this sort of like, it's very, it's not uncommon. There are a lot of like women who are in jail because their abusive partner called the cops on them and yeah. told the cops that they were being abused. Um, and I think that that's only relevant if this tool has like, and for, is, is, is taken seriously enough by the community to have an ability to like work as an enforcement yeah. system. I don't feel like that that's the case right now. I think that it would be great if that were something that was able to like transition into and that if the goal is to make it into something that can be a reliable source for people to say, oh, the <coughs> Life Abuser database has a report on this person and I trust that database. Yeah. Then, then in that case, I think it's important to have a um, to have a uh, what's the word? Um, like a failsafe for those situations where the accusation is coming from an abuser against the person they are abusing. I'm writing down the database who watches the watcher. Because uh, yes, that, that makes a lot of a lot of sense. This is another situation, when, which is another reason why I want to make this a community forum and an open discussion because. In order for either of those things to work in our favor, we absolutely need other people to help out. And there's a couple of features around the internet that I want to share with you to show how I'm trying to enable that, but I need other people to actually, like, I, I, cannot, I cannot do that on my own. Yeah. And I cannot do that on my own for two reasons. Number one, because I'm not a trustworthy individual, and no individual is. But secondly, uh, because it is a task so large that I feasibly cannot do that. Like, I, I just, I alone can't. Well, and there's, and there's no way, I mean, I'm thinking about the way that people who work with survivors of domestic violence do it, and it's even for people for whom, like, that is their full-time job. Yeah. It is very difficult in a situation where you're dealing with, say, a lesbian couple, where one of them has been accused of abuse by the other one and somebody's in jail, to really figure out, like, Okay, what's quote unquote really going on here? And yeah. who's really the abuser and etc. And like, there's a lot of intuition that plays into it, and sometimes it just boils down to this person called the hotline first. Yeah. So um, can someone hard. tell me how much I am on time? Because when you were talking, like four hands went up. It's three fifty-five. And how? And when do we have to end? Two forty. Two forty. Sorry. When do we end? Uh, two forty. Okay, so we have five minutes, so I want to get through a lot of this. I saw four hands. Can we quickly go through one, and then I saw this one, and then, and then this side? Um, I was going to point out that there are people within our community who are good at analyzing data. Yes, thank you. And that if we start aggregating that data, we can start possibly um, moving facts. Good, thank you. That was that. So one worry I have is that often, uh, for example, bloggers on the internet will, especially on topics of feminism and, and, and sex, face threats from people, including rape threats and things like that. And often those are accompanied with posting their home address, posting their real name. And so a worry that I have, and this might fall more under data integrity and its use, but what if someone uses that as a way to attack someone? So this way I can make someone's real name and their home address appear to anyone who visits their profile. Oh, shit. Um, yeah. So is there going to be a way of dealing with that? There probably needs to be. And I would love input on how to uh, perhaps filter for these things in a way that is technologically premised on having that process itself be not community controlled, but transparent. Uh, we need to do several things, and this comes to the ideas that I'm hope I was hoping that we would get to write down. But and I'll just say because we're really running out of time. Um, in addition to providing um, this data, this data is also downloadable in multiple different formats um, as a CSV file, a Microsoft Excel spreadsheet, etc. And my hope is to basically provide a fire hose of alleged reporting of, of, of reported consent violations so that we can analyze this data and so that we can do something um, to come up with a way to address that concern. That is a real concern. It's one I had and it's one I did not consider uh, to, to, to put into a prototype because two things. A, prototype, and B, um, 
I am far more concerned with the process of showing people that it is not enough to demand uh, change from FetLife or your BDSM powers, you know, the BDSM powers that be. They have given us an answer and the answer is no and the and what we need to do is to not take that answer and to actually do something, not ask them to do something, not request and not scream amongst ourselves that we should do something, but that we can, that we have the resources in 1.6 million fucking user accounts to actually do something about it. I see absolutely no sustained, reliable or consistent effort from anyone in the BDSM scene from the powers that be that is addressing anything other than maintaining a status quo. And those are the kinds of questions that I would love to see addressed front and center on BDSM meetings across, across, the, across the globe, um, in part because I have no good answer for that. And I would love to develop a system that will allow us to transparently uh, uh, allow that information to be filtered from at least the FetLife profile parts of them so that that information is still, um, uh, so that the information we need to, to share is still, is still out there, but is not, but is as minimal a threat as possible to the people who are already in the most marginalized positions on FetLife, such as youth, such as uh, people of color, such as trans people, such as sex workers, such as all the people who can't go to the police uh, on any, you know, in any reliable way. Does that make sense? Great, great point. Can someone write that down so that I can like talk? We can actually record that later. Thank you. Go ahead. Uh, two things. The first being kind of the who watches the watcher and community enforcement. I don't actually think we need community enforcement because I don't think we're going to get community enforcement. The BDSM community has had, in its modern incarnation, at least two decades to develop some system of self policing and keeping abusers out. And what it's done instead is promoted abusers to positions of power. Um, what I want to see instead is more, 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 more data and more access for everyone who wants to see it, to see it. Because it's, it's a Yelp problem, right? Like, the more reports I have, the better I can determine who, or like when I read hotel reviews. Some people really want a fluffy bed and they're going to rate it a zero if it's not a fluffy bed and some people want a free breakfast. And I can align myself with what is most my concern and read the reviews based on what my personal concerns are for a particular user and what sounds realistic. By having act, everyone have access to those points, it just creates it creates enough wealth of information that yeah. it's important. This is, in that sense, this is a free speech issue. More speech is better. More data is better. With that caveat, that we need to find a way to mitigate the availability of that information once it becomes used for that. I think it will become used to do what you're saying. Go ahead and make your point. The, the second and scary point for me is when, you know, if I was to go and pull out one of, your, of these reports, that life doesn't know I did it. May May doesn't know I did it. You might not know that I did it, but my abuser sure as hell knows I did it because they know what they did and they can match those details and they know if they did it to multiple people, they can probably tell which one of those multiple people reported that. And as we learned in the first privacy talk, an individual user is my biggest threat to my privacy. That's right. So part of the part of the problem and part of the reason this needs community backing to in any way be functional is to have the community be consistently one step ahead at least of the people who are likely to use this data to match that up um, <coughs> with their with their uh, uh, targets. One of the key points I want to make about that to the internet especially is that tools are neither moral, ethical, or in any way, technology is not in any way able to make value judgments. A tool is a tool is a tool, and it will be used for good and evil. Every single one is. Every single one is. This is a tool. I am not going to be, you know, there's, there, there's no way to vet this information technologically. It's not a technical problem. It's a social problem, and this is a technology to assist social solutions. I want to make that clear. Okay. Um, you haven't spoken, so can we go to you and then? Okay, so um, in terms of one of the most important things that we need this is getting the word out to people. Um, because of the way that it exists in its current form, and also just because of the kind of thing that it is and the kind of thing that reporting is, using this tool requires a sort of certain degree of already being out about your experience. Um, this is probably not, at least for in the beginning, going to be something where the first time anybody ever tells anyone that they were abused by this person, they're gonna tell the say database. Mm -hmm. Um, so, in terms of like getting critical mass, the people that we want to target are people who are already talking about yes. experiences. Yes. 
It sounds like we need a uh, forum on the internet to continue this conversation and start aggregating solutions. Yes. Is there a place right now that exists, or can we create one? There are several. There is this blog post that accepts comments, and then I'm happy to have that discussion happen there on my blog, tiny.cc slash F-A-A-D-E. There is a Tumblr thread that's currently ongoing about this. If you go to days.maybemame.com, um, or just go to my Twitter and look at any of the links that go to Fade, um, you'll see that this is reblogged in a, less than a day, something like 35, 40 times. So people are already beginning to talk about it there, that you can simply follow the reblog of that, and you can, have that, you can see that conversation there. I would love to create more forums of this kind. One of the problems with that is that they are likely to be targeted um, and taken down. I've gotten at least seven different Digital Millennium Copyright Act notices, takedown notices from FetLife um, about tools that I've written, uh, not this one, and I'm expecting this one to be taken down as well uh, because FetLife does that. Um, I know I'm out of time. Uh, so we need one, the, but, the, but the answer multi actually is we need it to be dispersed. This cannot happen in one place. It should not happen in one place, and we need to simply be talking to the other places where this is happening. Go ahead. Um, I feel like the best way for this to work is that it breaking FetLife in a way that FetLife realizes that it is not okay um, what they're doing and basically basically does yes. this within themselves. Two things about that. Number one is that this database gets downloaded and disseminated by every Fade user. So if you install this tool, you have on your computer a copy of the entire database and it will always be on your computer. Secondly, if you are willing to help out with this sort of stuff, make copies of the database. Save the page. It's just an HTML page for right now. I know it's a prototype, but it's still information that we can utilize later. Number three, this is connectable to anything else. The idea here is imagine what is the what's impossible and then believe that it's not impossible because these techniques and tools, like so case in point, this thing here, um, one of the ideas that I had was, okay, how do we make this even more useful without, for, without asking the survivor for more information about themselves? What about every time you submitted, and here's just an idea, I, I, I haven't finished it yet. What if every time that you submitted a report, uh, the form itself then took, went out to FetLife, took a screenshot or a snapshot of all the information about the alleged uh, abuser, the number of friends they had, their avatar pictures, their, uh, their fetish lists, this sort of stuff. Why? So that we can have a collection of this data and see how things begin to change and see how things begin to, to see how, how users begin to respond. Maybe it's interesting to know, maybe what we'll find, we don't know this, but maybe we'll find that 60-70% of alleged abusers have a specific fetish listed in their fetish list. Well, gee, that's useful information to know about. And we can start to collect more information about what the community looks like and make better informed choices about how to respond and how to deal with this issue that is plaguing us. Just to make it clear, you're talking about taking a snapshot of the accused person's website and not the person who's making the accusation. We don't know who's making the accusation. Okay. The tool does not know who's making the accusation. And so we can't do that, but we can do that to, to we can snapshot the alleged abuser's uh, profile, yes. Last thing is very quick, or very quick thing, regardless. Uh, consider enabling survivor advocates and uh, youth advocates to make reports on behalf of other people. So that I as a survivor don't want to make a report, but I as an advocate want to make that report. Yes, wonderful. Um, there's a lot to get through. We are way over time. Um, I saw many of you writing down little ideas that you have throughout them. Can I collect those so that we can look at them? Uh, later on, <coughs> I'd like to encourage everyone who has, all of these are going to go into an issue tracker. If you go to github.com slash Maytar, my name, M-E-I-T-A-R, you'll see a uh, list of tools that I've written. Felt Life Fade is one of them. Uh, there is an issue tracker there where you can submit new ideas as feature requests that you can uh, report bugs, that you can ask for in, uh, different kinds of improvements, that you can talk about issues, and that's another forum that's useful for that, and I'll be very active there. Um, these are all basically feature requests. I would love to work on them. If you know of anyone who has a uh, skill in programming or other kinds of advocacy, or even just is interested in talking about this issue, I encourage everyone. Did I give all of you these already? There are pages like this that have um, on my website. Um, if once you once you complete a report, let's do this really quickly. You are presented currently, and again, we can let's talk about the wording of all these. Let's talk about how to how to how to change or improve some of these. Um, when you make a report like so, 
I'm just going to say here, user number one, John Baku. Oops. John Baku. Severe. Random generic rape story, because there are just that many of them. Uh, when, uh, where, uh, the TARDIS. Mm -hmm. And when, we'll say 1776, mm -hmm. whatever. And the point is, once you submit this, you are presented with a thank you that gives you currently um, a link to, to the tool itself. There's a link there that also, to, to that PDF form. Some background information, and a lot of these links also provide, um, some of these links, not all of them, uh, provide links to places like Rain, to places like Long Walk Home. Uh, these are all organizations that uh, support survivors of abuse, and um, uh, uh, some in particular are um, uh, cyber, cyber uh, harassment and cyber stalking resources. So those are behind those links. The suggestion to make those even more prominent is a good one. I think I should do that. Um, any last words? Great, good. Thank you so much, and thank you for taking that.